He is an assistant professor at the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering at uh, IIT Roorkee. His uh, research interests are processor architecture for machine learning and computer architecture for CPUs and GPUs and VLSI a performance computing and approximate computing, etc. So today we'll be talking about uh, roofline modeling, a slightly different topic from the DRAM, but we will try to put it to this uh, today's uh, today's sessions. So over to you, uh, Dr. Sparsh. Yes, and uh, Dr. Vishwesh, actually I have broken down my PPT into four parts. So if mm -hmm. you can have those recorded separately, that means create a different. Yeah, should be possible. Uh, Vinay just, or Kartik, yeah, no. so please take a note of it and do it accordingly. So then and yes, whenever so that's... you want to break it up, so you may sure. tell them, or if it is possible, they can understand. It. So just okay. tell them now accordingly. Sure, thank, thank you. So let so, us start. Uh, just a second, sir. We have started the recording for the first part now. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, let me start sharing the content. Uh, the main charges will be found in the hospital. So they will be allocating you already? Yes, they are allocating you already. Okay. Can we mute everybody else? Okay. Okay. Thank you. So I hope you can see my slides. Yes, yes. Okay. So uh, good morning, everyone. I will discuss today about roofline model and arithmetic intensity. So remember, roofline model is defined for a computing system or a processor, and arithmetic intensity is defined for any application or a program. So roofline model synthesizes communication, computation, and locality into a single matrix. So roofline model is a you know it, it, this is a tool for performance modeling of a system. So in any program, we need to do two things bring data from memory, and today's topic is the DNAMs. And then we perform computations on the data. So the time that is taken by any application will be higher of the two. So roofline model tries to capture this exact intuition. That means it, it tr tries to tell you what is the roofline of the, on the performance you can get, what is the maximum performance that this computing system can provide. Any real application will not, in general, achieve the highest performance. It will achieve much less. But this roofline model tells you the highest performance that is possible. So, so see, uh, usually we use simulators, like you are using Jamsing, and on those simulators, we run some benchmark suits, such as SPEC. So when you run those benchmark suits on your simulator, you are getting the estimate of the actual performance, right? That only that particular application will get. So there, you, you find out the performance of only that particular application, whereas, Roofline model tells you the peak, right? That means take take any application, take any benchmark. What is the maximum performance that that benchmark or application can get on this computing system? So both are important. Both are complementary. You also need benchmarks to find out what is the you know exact performance that this application will get, and you also need to get a typical idea that okay, I don't want myself to be biased with one benchmark suit or other benchmark suit. I want to get an idea of what is the maximum capacity of performance that this computing system can provide. So for that, we will use the roofline model. So now you will read many papers, and they all use this roofline model. So attainable performance is the minimum because you know we are all talking about bottleneck. Even if one factor becomes a bottleneck, you can't go past that. That's why it is a minimum of flops per second of that computing system. That means, see, any computing system will have some hardware. It will have some adders or multiplier. And that will decide what is the maximum performance you can get. Right? Plus, uh, I, mean, so, no, no, I mean, plus is not the right word, but uh, minimum of this flops per second, right? And AI into bandwidth. Here AI, is, here, so, uh, here AI is not artificial intelligence, here AI is arithmetic intensity, and bandwidth is the memory bandwidth. I will define arithmetic intensity very soon. So now let us define arithmetic intensity. This is for an application. So AI for an application is how many computation it performs and divided by how many bytes of data it fetches from the memory. So it's a very simple linear relationship. Right, we are all used to our timing simulations where we study at each second how much data is it fetching, how many access are there to 
from cash into cash routine and but here we are talking about the whole program right for, for, for the duration of the whole program what is roughly uh, of course we will have caches also into the system but this is the first uh, cut where we assume there are no caches then you can in the second step you can bring in the cache and you can revise this model to make it more accurate but at the first step we are assuming there are no caches so all the data you need are you you are getting it from main memory so how much data you are getting from memory and here is how much computations you are doing so that means total number of floating point operations and total number of dram bytes so let us take a very simple example consider multiplication of two n cross n matrices so the number of computations is order of n cube everyone knows about it and because these are n cross n matrices so amount of bytes fetch is order of n square so if you use this computation divided by the data fetch you will see that the ai of this matrix multiplication will be order of n right so this is how a roof line model looks like on both axes we have logarithmic scale okay on both axes we have logarithmic scale y axis is the maximum performance you can attain attainable performance measured as gigaflops per second here dp is the double precision and x axis is the ai of that application okay so here so what what exactly is this now i will give more insights into how we get this so here suppose we try to draw this this is the peak flop that a computing system can provide right if you have suppose only four adders and four multipliers and assume you can use all all the four adders and four multipliers in single cycle then you can only do eight floating point operations in a single cycle so this peak flop will show you eight eight floating point operations per second that's all so that is this line but but you also need data right for doing those eight operations you need certain operands that you will fetch from the main memory so here you need this uh, you will access data from dram so now we have already told that the performance is the minimum of these two curves what is the minimum of these two curves this right because whenever you are stuck by the data you will only get this much performance even though you have compute hardware you don't just have data available so your performance will be lower at this and when uh, when when you come here at this point there even though you can get data very very fast but you don't have any adder or multiplier to do the computation so this will be your peak right so this why this is the roof line or that's what's called a roof line model and this is a very very interesting you know analysis and you will see in almost all the research papers is they call that this application is memory bandwidth bound or this application is compute bound so how do we decide that so there is this uh, line right the this point is called first of all the rich point at this point the these two curves intersect okay this this straight line curve and this peak flop curve they intersect so at this point ai is uh, peak flop equals to ai into memory bandwidth and any application which has ai value below this right any value of ai which is here on this system it will be memory bound and any application which has ai value in this region on this system it will be compute bound okay so now again let us get some more insights and then we'll get to solve solve some uh, solve questions so bandwidth is defined as bytes per second everybody knows and flops is number of floating point operations per second okay here uh flops equals to ai into bandwidth okay this is the basic equation of ai ai equals to flops divided by bandwidth now you take log on the both you take log on both the sides so you get log of flops equals to log of ai plus log of bandwidth right very very simple so roof line model is nothing but log this is it is a plot of log flops against log of ai we all remember this y equals to mx plus b equation where m equals to 1 here here m is equal to 1 and b is the y y intercept okay so that is log of bandwidth so this straight line this straight line 
right? This this D ran straight line is nothing but this. Here we have plotted this equation to get that straight line. Okay, and and this this straight line, this one, this horizontal straight line comes because of the hardware limit. What, what, uh, irrespective of what your AI value is, you can't do more than this computation. So this factor comes from there, and this straight line comes from the uh, you know relationship between flops and AI and bandwidth. So for different now, now you see right, this is the your P, this is your Y intercept. So for different value of bandwidth, you will get different intercept on the Y axis. So this is how you, this is if your bandwidth value was B W one, then this is the intercept. If your bandwidth value was bw2 then this is the intercept right similarly different algorithms will have different values of ai or arithmetic intensity so here for example this is algorithm one it it will have this it, so this algorithm one can only achieve this performance if, if the bandwidth is bw1 it cannot get more than this no matter what optimization you do so now you can know if, if your current performance is here, that means what is the scope left? How much more can you optimize? Similarly, algorithm two. Algorithm two, suppose this is the algorithm two has this much a value of AI. So you're already at the peak performance. Now there is nothing you can do to optimize the performance. Already you have achieved the peak performance. You have hit the roof line. Okay, so this that's why this roof line model is very powerful to find out how much we have already optimized and how much is there on the table. Now let us take some examples which will give you more uh, insights. So consider a roof line model whose ridge point has x and y coordinates as 7.11 and 204.8. Find the performance for the so certain value of the that means we, suppose we take some point AI probably it is here right because this AI is less than 7.11 so it will be somewhere here also tell whether we are in a bandwidth bound region or a compute bound region so because this value of AI this AI uh, one, one, by, uh, 1 by 14 because it is less than 7.11 we are in a memory bandwidth bound region that is first point so that means uh, first of all let us find out what is the memory system bandwidth that means memory bandwidth in this system. So that from this equation, AI into bandwidth equals to peak flop, we find out that the bandwidth is 28.8. Now for AI value of 1 by 14, we get performance as AI into bandwidth, right? Because we are in this region, we are in this. If, if, if our AI value was here, we can directly say that, okay, we will, our performance is 204.8. But because we are in this region, we have to take the maximum performance right from this equation this equation uh, our flop is AI independent so AI is this and bandwidth is this so the performance we are able to get is maximum performance we can get for this AI is 2.057 okay so now now you can see our, our best performance that this computing system can provide us is 204 but currently we are only achieving two Two gigaflops per second. That means only one percent of the performance we are able to achieve. How much gross underutilization we are doing? And as you, if if you can somehow improve that value of AI for this computing for for, for, uh, for this application, okay, with increasing value of AI, your performance will be improved till we reach the peak performance of the process. Now here is another application. So here now you see it has a for loop. In each for loop, we are doing two floating point operations. One is this plus, another is this multiplication. Now assume that, uh, see this alpha variable, we will assume it resides in the register itself. For this alpha variable, we don't have to access the memory. Now we assume that for variables z, x, and y, they are array, they will be stored in the memory. We, we, we assume they are double precision, that means they are eight byte variables. So, in each iteration, we will transfer 24 bytes of data because we will read X and Y and we will write Z back to the memory. So total amount of data transfer is transferred is 24 bytes. So what is the AI value? Two, number of computation is two. 
and amount of data fetched is 24 bytes. So two divided divided by 24 bytes. So this is our AI value. So it resides somewhere here. Okay. Now uh, let us take some more solid examples. Here we have been given the specifications of two computing systems. Here one of them is GPU, another of them is a CPU. Okay, and here we have been told that for this GPU, the peak performance, single precision peak performance is 2800 gigaflops. For CPU, peak performance is 1300 gigaflops. The memory bandwidth of GPU is 160, and that of this CPU is 51. From this data, we have to draw the roofline model of CPU and GPU. Okay. I could give you a graph paper and you have to draw it manually. Here we'll just do it, we'll do it on the screen. So how do we do? We first compute the log 10 value of these numbers. Okay. So log 10 of 2800 is 3.4. Log 10 of 1300 is 3.11. Log 10 of 160 is 2.2. Log 10 of uh, 51 is 1.7. Okay, so from this, you can th see that for the CPU, this is y intercept, right? This y intercept is log of bandwidth. So log of bandwidth is 2. Point, uh, here, here, but, but this is 1.7. This number is 1.7. This number is 2.2, right? Your y intercept is log of bandwidth. So this is 2.2. And this, the peak performance that GPU can provide you is 2800 gigaflops. So on the log axis, this is just 3.4. So this number is 3.4 and this number is 3.11. So now you have, we have also drawn the roofline model. Or if I had if I had given you this roofline model, you could have easily found out the value of peak performance and bandwidth. And one more thing is you can now easily compare CPU and GPU this visually okay so next next example so nowadays you know cnns are becoming very popular and alexnet is probably the most popular cnn so here uh, alexnet has five convolution layers and three fc layers now in different layers of uh, convolution these are the number of parameters so these are also called weights and this is the number of computation that convolution layers perform, each of the convolution layers perform. Similarly here, these are the number of weights in the FC layer, these are the number of weights in convolution, in the, the, these are the number of computations in the FC layer. This is the overall number of parameters, this is the overall number of computations, and this is just the contribution of convolution layers and FC layers. So from this, I'm sure you can very easily compute the AI value of each layer. Okay, so assume that each weight is just four bytes, that means single precision weight. So you can compute the AI value of each of the convolution layers and each of the FC layers. This is the overall AI value. This is the AI value of convolution layers and FC layers. So one point you can see is that AI varies greatly across the layers. If you want to design, suppose, an accelerator for this LX, you would have to take this point. Because here you can see that for FC layers, AI value is very, very low. That means they will need a different kind of accelerator, whereas convolution layers, they will need a different kind of accelerator. OK, and you can see their typical characteristics. So FC layers have very low AI. That means they are, they are bandwidth bound. Here, we need to be really need a very, very high memory bandwidth. And here, they are compute bound. So here, bandwidth is not a problem. Let us try to increase the number of adders or multipliers in the system. So to summarize in this presentation, we learned about root and model and arithmetic intensity. We find we learned how to find the root and model of application, various processes and various layers of a scene, and how they are useful for optimizing processor performance. These are some sort, you know, these are some material for further study. So can you please stop the PPT? Sorry, stop the recording. We'll have the next video. No.